Oh, Terry. Hi, David. Hi, Terry. How are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. So glad to have good. you. I'm so glad to see you on here. Nice to see you. I, I was going to reach out to you and Christian and see if we could have a chat later today or tomorrow. So you guys um, talk to amongst yourselves and then email me, okay? Okay, great. Perfect. Okay, great. Good. It is the stroke of 11. Um, thank you all for joining us this morning. We will get started here in just a minute and uh, I'll turn things over to Terry. I am excited that you all joined. So excited that Terry was willing to do this for us. Um, I know the last several months have been a challenging time for everybody and uh, I look forward to, to hearing what Terry has to tell us today to, to help us kind of reset our mind and uh, how we're how we're looking at the market so with that i will pass it off to uh terry to get us started good morning everyone thanks for being with us today and i am excited as always my day always goes a little bit better when i have an actual purpose and so super excited that you invited me thank you david thank you christian it's great to be here so what i thought we would talk about today is the ninja view of today's market um, Larry Kendall and I put this out uh, to the Ninja world last week and it seemed to be a, a soft spot, a sore spot, and we felt like it would be a really good way to um, just kind of re-engage ourselves with what's really going on in the market right now. You know, in every down market or sideways market or whatever you want to call this market that we're in, um, there's always what we call a flight to quality. And what we mean by that is buyers and sellers um, realize that because of what's going on, they really need a full-time professional to help them through their pain or pleasure, whatever it is that they're working through at this time. And one of the great things about it, if we can find a, a silver lining, is that um, the hobbyists kind of begin to go away. The part-timers begin to go away. And uh, the full-timers, uh, the ones that step up, step up. In fact, the best people in our industry begin to build their businesses and get stronger during the down markets. And the companies, the best companies, begin to really gain traction with regard to their market share. So what we mean by the flight to quality is there's three components. There's the right people, which is our ninjas, you, all of you the right time, which is what's going on right now, and of course the right place, the markets in which we are. And we're right in the middle of that. If we've positioned ourselves as the proactive, trusted real estate advisor that we are called to be. Um, I don't know if any of you have read Atomic Habits by James Clear, but one of the quotes, and I'm probably gonna share a couple of them today, um, is nothing sustains motivation better than belonging to the right tribe. If you have not read Atomic Habits by James Clear, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably the best mindset book I've ever read. Now, I probably could be accused of saying that by about other books. Um, th those of you on this call know me really well. Um, but it, it, it is just, it's fascinating. It's a simplified version and it's fascinating, but nothing sustains motivation better than belonging to the right tribe, being with the right company, being around the right people, like of course you are. And so we're going to kind of unpack our time together today like we do all ninja things, which you're used to. And that is our three success keys. We'll start with talking about our mindset, then we will go into our skill set, and then our actions. So before we jump into mindset, I wanted to say something because I've gotten some feedback. I've been doing these, these whatever we call these, Zoom calls, webinars, whatever, since about mid-March now. And there have been many of you, I mean, I heard from four of you already this morning before we even got on the call. And there have been many of you that, that appreciate that I have shared, um, I've been transparent. And I, I really want to share with you right now with regard to mindset that what I'm not talking about is that you're fine, that you're good. Um, I have never in my life, and I've been through a lot of life, I have never experienced so many emotions that I wasn't expecting. 
that I've ex that I've experienced during this uh, pandemic, if you will. And so I want you to be okay with where you are. You know, when we ask each other, um, are you okay? Uh, typically we'll say, I'm good, how are you? You know, but the truth is, are you good? You know, cause I'm good like right now, but uh, I might not be good later today, I don't know. Um, and it's, it's so great when you surround yourself with people that you can be honest and transparent with first. And then secondly, you can um, grow and lean on during this time. So as we jump into mindset, one of my favorite ninjas, and you all have heard of her because I've talked about her, Joanne de Leon in um, Fort Collins, Colorado. She has changed or reframed her thought process with regard to COVID. I think you're going to like it. Here's what she says. I've changed COVID to continuing on very inspired daily. This is really caught on in the Ninja Nation because if we don't inspire ourselves and one another, um, there's not a lot out there that's inspiring right now. And so continuing on very inspired daily. Uh, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. We're in the midst of a, a storm, but it's dancing or learning to dance in the rain. When this is, this is all going on, am I showing up? Am I dancing in the rain? Am I showing up during the storm? I introduced you to another friend of mine in a previous uh, Zoom call by the name of Patty Phillips, and I even told you what I'm about to share with you again about her, and that was that she said, and she's a very high producer, and she said, I'm evolving, which we talked a lot about on um, a call before this. I'm having to learn how to be different in this market in order to survive. And so, of course, the definition of evolution is the ability of a species to change or adapt to its environment in order to survive. So are we changing and adapting in the mindset area? Because that's where it starts. If I'm not changing and adapting in the mindset area, am I really changing and adapting? So many <clears throat> realtors today are kind of just hunkering down, hibernating, um, putting their head in the sand and waiting for this to pass. What if it doesn't? I mean, you know me well, I'm not a doom and gloomer, but what if new normal looks like this for another 12 months or whatever? Am I willing to, am I willing to subject myself to what it takes to adapt in the mindset area? I love what Patty said about evolution. She said, I want to be a fountain, not a drain. Her daily uh, mantra to herself, if you will, is who can I inspire today? You know, on the days that there's somebody that we can inspire, uh, I don't know about you, but I tend to have a way better day when I have somebody to inspire than a day where I don't have anything to do and I'm just kind of hanging out. Um, although I love those days. Um, it's not as fulfilling because it can be draining. There's a lot of negativity going on around us. So I want us to take a realistic vision of or take a look at a realistic vision of the future one of the things that i want to remind you that i know you know but as as just a reminder so that we are um we're encouraged and that is that we're one of the three basics in life there are three basics all of which we know food shelter and clothing but the shelter the, the housing we're part of that no matter where the market goes, what happens in the market, um, people need a place to live, whether it's to rent or to buy, people need a place to live. But let's take that vision of the future just a step further and talk about the pent up demand and the postponed income. If you have, um, I, I, not if you do, you surely do. With a company your size, there's someone or five in the company who are those fact checkers, if you will, right? And, um, and there's this huge pent up demand of people that don't have to buy or sell right now. And they're kind of waiting to see what happens. And so it's been said that we're probably gonna see a postponement of our income in 2020. Well, that fact checker at the group is um, a guy by the name of Chris, and he happens to be 
really good friends with our chief economist at NAR, uh, Lawrence Yoon. And so Chris sent an email to Lawrence and he said, Chris, uh, Lawrence, what do you think about this pent up demand and so on, right? And here was Chris's response, uh, Lawrence's response. I'll be a bit more conservative and say that we will not get all of missed economy activity, maybe 95% by year end. The massive stimulus package will help us get there. One certainty is that pricing or prices are staying solid. So what Lawrence Yoon, and I, you don't need to take this to heart like I did, but I'm always looking for the best news. I really don't want the bad news. In fact, I don't watch the bad news. I choose what I watch because I monitor my mindset. And, and so Lawrence Yoon is one of the folks that I like to listen to because I believe in him. I believe he knows what he's talking about. Things that he said have always come to pass and so on. And he says that 95% of our income will be likely will be earned by the year, by the year end and that home prices are gonna stay solid. And so I'm choosing to believe that. One of the big differences in the, the diff between our last downturn and this one, you know, everybody, not everybody, but lots of people are saying, we're in another, you know, we're, it's gonna hit us and we're gonna, you know, just have this uh, terrible market and so on, right? But here's the difference. In 07, 08, 2010-ish, right? Inventory was crazy. It was almost a one year's worth of inventory between 10 and 12 months worth of inventory. The inventory today is down as low as two and a half months on this chart. But, but in some markets, and I don't know your market specifically, but I know in Las Vegas, our inventory is down to a one month supply of inventory. So the inventory's there, the buyers, um, I, I'm sorry, the inventory's not there, the buyers are there, interest rates are low, we're just going through a period of, of change, okay? Um, so our home price is going to crash, according to Lawrence Yoon and many other people that are way smarter than me, they say no. So let's jump into skill set. And what I chose, because I only had about 50 minutes of your time today, um, is I chose to talk about listings, because listings tend to be our issue these days. And so let's talk a little bit about working with sellers and why we exist, okay? We're, we're all realtors or have some responsibility in that arena right now that are on this call. And the reason we exist is to help our people or our, and our clients go from the life they have to the life they dream about. What I found interesting about this quote is I have been a realtor for 31 years. And when I went from selling to coaching and teaching, which has been, this is my 10th year, I realized that I'm still existing to help my people, that's you, go from the life you have to the life you dream about. I won't mention any names because I didn't ask permission, but one of the contacts that I got this morning from somebody in your company said, life is good, um, you know, and so on. But this year has been so tough. Um, business is good, but the multiple offers and the unrealistic buyers and sellers and, and so on, right? Well, I'm pretty sure that's not the life we dream or dreamt of when we became realtors. Um, most of us on this call know that Ninja, Ninja, Ninja's goal is for us to increase our income per hour so we can have a life. So let's talk listing goals, okay? And this whole life thing. We're gonna talk two different mindsets within this skill set when we talk about listing goals. We'll talk first about the typical realtor, non-Ninja realtor, okay? And their goal is to get the listing. How am I gonna get that listing? What do I have to say? What do I have to do? But I wanna get that listing. And then there's the ninja's mindset, which is how can I help you get from where you are to where you want to go? How can I get you there on time, right? We're, on, we're, we're in the seller process. How can I get you to where you want to go on time? My job is to get you where you want to go on time. Would you like to see your odds? And, and, and so at this point, ninjas differentiate themselves because, let me ask you this. Do you think a seller 
can pick up on the vibe that we're emitting, whether we think I got to get this listing or how can I help you get to where you want to go on time? And the answer is absolutely they can. The ninja is looking for the way to get you from point A to point B. Very simply put, how can I get you from where you are to where you want to be with the least amount of uncertainty and disruption in the process? And that's what the ninja is looking for. The typical realtor is just figuring out, how can I get the listing? I'll deal with the rest of it when it happens. So let's talk about what we call our value proposition. And many of you, probably most of you on this call have seen this before. But when we go into a listing appointment, because that's what we're talking about, we're often competing for the listing. So there's the prospect, the seller, there's us, and there's the competition. And the value parity is the, the, the things that we all do that are the same. What do we, so when we go in and we say, well, you should list with me, I put a sign on the house and a lockbox and flyers on the lockbox and I'm gonna put it on the MLS and it's gonna go on the internet. And they're thinking, that's what everybody does. Our job is to articulate our value wedge, especially in a time when we've got this flight to quality. What does our value wedge look like? Why would it be so beneficial for them to list with us? And only you know that. You know what your company offers, you know what you offer. And so what is it that, is, that differentiates you from that competition? So we equalize, yes, I do do the same thing that everybody else does, but let me tell you about what's different about the way I serve you. And we begin to clarify the value that we bring that most agents don't bring, that many agents in a market where there's lots of multiple offers and so on, they completely discount their service. And I don't mean discount as in price. I mean, they don't do everything that they'd always done. They don't take professional photography. They don't hold open houses, which we really can't do right now, except we'll talk about that in a minute and so on, right? They, they, they don't bring their A game. So a value clarification question, and hopefully many of you have been using this since our installation is, do you believe that your home will sell for a fixed price or price range or do you believe that my ability to market and negotiate on your behalf will have anything to do with that? Do you think that hiring me will help you sell your house faster, for more, you know, on your terms, whatever the case may be? And many don't ask this question because we're just asking, so tell me, do you wanna list with me? Well, do you believe that what I do will help determine what you get, how you get it, and when you get it. So, so let's talk about five primary points of articulating our value. There are others, but we're gonna talk about the top five. So enhance the property. Just what do we do to enhance properties? We stage, we get landscaping done, um, we get the property prepared, right? because we wanna get them top dollar. How about our pricing strategy? So that they net the most. You see sellers think in terms of the listing price. What they don't think about is that bottom line. How much are they gonna walk away with? What's gonna net them the most money? Um, how about giving them maximum exposure? I wanna tell you a story that just happened a couple of days ago about maximum exposure. And although it wasn't a house, it was a house of sorts. Mr. Johnson and I decided that we were going to sell our um, class A motorhome, 35 feet class A motorhome. Not that easy to sell. Um, not everybody wants a you know mon monster like that. So I, um, I had professional phot photography done. I had a video done. And then we were gone for a week to Ninja headquarters. So I didn't put it on the market because I wanted to be ready for when it hit the market. And I put it on the market on sun, uh, Monday evening when we got home, uh, probably around seven o'clock. Had a full price cash offer in hand 20 hours later. Why? Because I enhanced the motorhome. I made sure it was in perfect condition. I made sure that I priced it exactly where it should be. And then I, I posted it on Facebook. Of course, Mr. Johnson's like, where are you gonna advertise this? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna sell it? 
And I go, if you could just give me a week, I've got a plan, okay? Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. But we're the professional. And I knew if I put it out to my people that I would sell it, and I did. What are we doing to maximize the exposure of our sellers? We don't just put it on the MLS and wait to see what happens. We decide on a group of people who would be the most likely to, and we expose that to those people. Number four, we help negotiate the best contract. The best contract's not always price. It might be terms. It might be um, uh, inclusions and exclusions. We'll talk about all those in just a little bit. It might not be the cash offer because they didn't give us a, a proof of funds. It might not be the highest offer, which is an FHA and the um, you know one that's $5,000 less is putting 25% down. It, you have to negotiate the best contract. It's not what people think is the obvious, which is the highest contract. And then lastly, managing the transaction. Managing the transaction. There's so many moving parts to getting a property sold, right? But only the professionals that have this process down pat can get clients through this with no surprises is what we call it, right? Often for sale by owners these days say, you know, I really think I'm probably gonna try and sell it by owner. Here should be a response. You'll get it sold. You'll probably have multiple offers, but getting a contract on it doesn't mean it's sold. It doesn't mean it closed. I wanna get you from point A to point B with the least amount of disruption and managing the transactions, the hard part these days, getting it sold, if it's enhanced and if it's priced right and if it's, it's, it's exposed right, is not going to be the hardest part. It's gonna, get you, it's gonna be getting you from signature to closing. So with regard to articulating our value, I kind of feel like this is kind of our job description, if you will. The fee to deliver this level of service is, and you fill in the blank. I know so and, said, so and so said they would do it for X, but the fee for me to deliver this level of service, you fill in the blank. If you follow my plan, your home will likely sell at the top of the range. And if this is true in your market, I would add on with multiple offers. Of course, I can't guarantee that. But if you follow this plan, it will probably sell at the top of the range and have multiple offers on it. My fee to deliver that level of service is X. As a seller in this market, their greatest expense is the money they don't make. Be sure and remind them of that. Your greatest expense is the money that you leave on the table. So as we talk about listings and sellers, I want to ask us to keep our focus and our poise. I don't know if any of you are like me, but the minute a seller call comes in, like I want to jump on the phone and go, you want to have it on the market tomorrow by five? I mean, I love listings, right? Everybody does because they sell quickly in this market if they're priced right. But if we keep our focus and our poise, we're likely not only to save ourselves time, but make our sellers money. We have a proven system in Ninja and it's a three-step listing launch process or system. Here's an interesting fact about today. People are holding on to their cash. They're hoarding their cash. They don't want to, the, the, the number of people that are buying fixers is down. And the reason it is, is people don't want to spend their money. They don't really know exactly what's going to happen. So we want to do the right things in the right order, right? Let me give you an example. I'm going to give you a sentence two different ways. The dog bit Johnny. Johnny bit the dog. Same words, different order. Okay, well, who got bit, Johnny or the dog? I need to know. Well, you decide. Same words, different order. There's a, there's a three-step process, and in this order, you will bring yourself and your clients a much quicker and, and um, less stressed situation when it comes to selling your house, and it looks like this. Package, price, and promote. Has anybody besides me ever put a house on the market? So you got the listing. They said they were going to paint, put in new carpet, but they really wanted it sold quick. And so you put it on the market, but you put in the, in the, in the, in the comments, 
that it would have new carpet, new landscaping, and new paint by, right? 60% plus of the population gathers visually. So if we put it on the market at the price, the fixed price, but unfixed, they can't unsee what they saw. So we didn't package it properly and then price it and then promote it. We did all three, but we did it in the wrong order. Think of the uh, New Year's Day parade, the Macy's parade, right? Can you imagine if the float went down the street with the worker still on it, finishing up the last few things? Of course, all the, 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 the people are on it and they're waving to everybody, but they're still painting things and they're still putting things in place. People will go, what are they thinking? What, you can't do that? Well, you can but you're gonna have people talking behind your back and, and you're definitely not gonna get all the votes, right? Because we didn't do it in the right order. All right, lastly, in the skill set section before I move on, let's talk about the art of negotiation. There's five points to negotiation. And again, this is an area that I feel our industry is lacking in because for the last, I'll just speak from my own experience in my market, the last 10, 12 years, take the best offer and run with it. There's 15 offers on every house. Well, okay, but that's not very safe because there's several, well, five points of negotiation that are very important and that always get negotiated. So price, of course, right? But again, it's not always the highest contract that gets the, that's the best contract received. Let's just uh, accept, I'm sorry. Let's just say, that the seller gets five offers. So you present five offers. Two are cash, three are loan. So the two cash, one has proof of funds, the other one doesn't. The three loan ones, one of them's the highest, but it's an FHA. One of them's marginal, it doesn't have an approval letter at all. And one of them's 25% down and it's better than both of the cash offers. Price isn't just the dollar amount. It's figuring out what the best price is the best offer, the one that's most closable. Then what about the terms? If you would for just a moment, go with me on a journey. Let's get off of the seller journey and just go on the buyer seller journey, right? It doesn't matter who we're working with. If I was working with a buyer, I would call the agent and say, the listing agent, and I would say, tell me what the perfect uh, offer would look like. Aside from price, Tell me what the perfect op offer for your sellers would look like. And the agent says, well, thank you so much for asking, Terry. Actually, my sellers would, um, they would love to close. I mean, they would love to close by, say, August 15th, which is kind of a stretch, but they would love to. But they need to stay in the house until September 30th. Okay, anything else? I mean, you, they, you start talking through terms and closing and possession and um, how about this one? Well, in a perfect world, Terry, they wanna sell this house with everything in it. They're starting over where they're going. So what does the perfect offer look like? If somebody says, this is what would be perfect, and if you really wanna write a perfect offer, then you write what the sellers would really want. Now, if you can, of course, right? But these negotiating points, the reason I'm bringing all of these up is that if we will enlighten our buyers and our sellers before they get into negotiation on how to negotiate, it'll go a lot smoother than it does when we're in the heat of the moment. There's 15 offers. They had no idea there would be multiple offers. They want to offer 25,000 under uh, asking price, you know, and so on. So uh, one of our favorite ways to say this, Chris Doyle, um, a ninja said this, let's teach them how to swim before we throw them in the ocean. Let's make sure they know how to negotiate and what negotiation points are. Um, contingencies, let's talk about this one. So you put a house on the market. On Wednesday, you put in the confidential remarks to the agents that you'll be reviewing offers on Monday. And that time frame is number one, to give it the most exposure, get people through the property. But it would also allow for us as buyer's agents to bring our people through with their inspector so they could leave off the inspection contingency if they wanted to, or they could at least know what the condition of the property was before they put it, um, before they put their offer in. 
So all of these things are negotiating points and it's so much easier to negotiate when you've already schooled the buyer and or seller on what negotiation looks like, what we can expect and why we're trying to write offers the way we are these days. The bottom line as a ninja is we want to be patient and we want to be persistent. We, we, we've learned over the years that 80% of the movement or the negotiation happens in the last 20% 20, 20 of time allotted for that movement or negotiation. So if the seller were to get super heated and say, this is just so offensive, I just can't believe that, that a buyer would write us this offer. Our job, number one, as a step down transformer is to take the emotion out of it, agree with them, you know, and then say, but here's the deal. I would like us to never let the ball drop on our side of the net. Let's, let's just go back with a counter offer, even if it's at full price. Let's go back with a counter offer so that um, maybe they were just seeing if they could get it for less. And now that they know they can't, they're willing to pay full price. But if we let the ball fall on our side of the net, we'll never know because they'll move on. All right, now let's jump into our actions. Right now, we're being told daily what we can't do. You can't go to the restaurants. You kids can't go to school. You can't go to church. You can't, you can't, you can't. I want to shift gears today and talk about what we can do. What's going on out there that you and I, as proactive trusted advisors, realtors, what can we do? The amazing late Dr. Stephen Covey in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, um, introduced us to these three circles in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, one is the circle of concern, circle of influence, circle of control. I've already talked to you about these on a different call that we had, but I want to yet again um, put a different slant on it. Now we're talking about what we can do. Of course, the circle of concern is all that's going on in the world right now. I'm concerned about the virus. I'm concerned about the civil unrest. I'm concerned, um, I don't wanna get the virus. I don't wanna be around people that might have had the virus. All of these are very fear-based thoughts. But because I know and I'm just concerned about it, I'm not letting it consume me. I can't do anything about what I'm concerned about. All I can do is be concerned about it. And that's not irresponsible. And so the folks that land in the circle of concern and camp there, um, in Napoleon's Hill outwitting the devil, um, he called them drifters. They just kind of go along to get along, right? They just go along wherever everybody else is going. They live in a place of fear. They're very much victims of everything that's going on. Now I want to talk about us, us ninjas. See, ninjas are players. We don't fall into the victim mindset. We're players. We're very controlled. We, who can we control, by the way? Ourselves. That's it. We can't control anybody but ourselves. So my mindset, am I daily focusing on the mindset I need to go out into the day, out into the game, and be and, and, and uh, receive uh, the, the business, be the person I need to be, be the person that receives the business if my clients need help, right? And then the circle of influence. Who can I influence? I can influence all of my people, all of the people that consider me their proactive, trusted real estate advisor. Am I influencing them in a positive way? I don't want to be a drain. I want to be a fountain. So I don't fall into that concern trap. I fall into the influence trap. A great ninja, Andrea Tool, uh, shared some numbers with us um, the very first part of COVID. And I just think these are so worthy of sharing because I wanna tell you how she went about this and what she did to, to make this happen. From March 15th to April 30th, she put 10 contracts under, of uh, 10, transactions under contract and they closed. Six were listings, four were buyers. But here's what you need to know about the Colorado market from March 15th to March uh, to April 30th. It was on complete lockdown. 
you could not go into a house and see it. So it was lots of virtual open houses, lots of virtual um, um, uh, photography, drone photography, um, and so on, right? And so as she was being interviewed, the question was asked, you know, how did you do it? I mean, you know, your, your head, how do you keep your head in the game? How do you do this kind of business during a time like this? And she said, I always bring my A game. I've noticed in several parts of the country where there's multiple offers on every, everything you put on the market, that a lot of people have stopped bringing their A game. And ninjas don't do that. So she's done all the staging, the photography, the video, the drone photography, floor plans on everything, attachments of everything that's been done to the property. She's just bringing her A game to every listing. But then she said the magic, for me at least. And that was, I've just been loving on my people, loving on them. And you know me, I've been with you many, many years, many, many times. That's my motto, if we'll love on our people, they see us as their proactive trusted advisor, but they want to, they need to see us first as a relationship. So she's just been loving on them through the Ninja Nine, and that's what produced this business. There is so many people right now, friends, that need to move because they've lost their job or they need a bigger house or they've been stuck at home for four months and decide they don't like who they're stuck at home with. I don't know. Here's what I know. So more change is going on than I've ever seen in my 31 years in people's lives right now. And many, many, many realtors are just letting the change happen and not showing up and loving on their people. What I don't mean is calling and saying, hey, have you thought about buying or selling now? Pretty bad out there, right? I mean, just calling and asking them, how are you? Are you still working? Are you homeschooling the kids? What's going on? How are you feeling? No, how are you really feeling? And just loving on them at a level that will create that relationship that when the time comes for a trusted advisor, they wouldn't choose anybody but you because of the way that you make them feel. Andrea has learned, and she actually learned this a long time ago, but she's learned to dance in the rain. She's learned that this is it's just how you handle your people and the business will come. It's funny. Um, the Ninja Nine, which you are all very familiar with, we are now calling it the Virtual Ninja Nine, and that's because we didn't know this until until um, May, uh, March, and that is all of the Ninja Nine can be done virtually. Five daily habits, four weekly habits. We call the Ninja Nine, of course, when it comes to the business facet of life, the trend bender, and what a trend bender is, and I'm just gonna use myself as an example, in 1990, February 3rd of 1990, I got my real estate license, went to work for a company, showed up my first day of work, and had a great mentor. And I did really, really well my first 11 years in the business, other than working 24-7, 365 days a year, right? So I was doing really well. And then in 2001, my business took off. My life took off. The trajectory of Terry Johnson was forever changed. What happened right here is what we call a trend bender. And for me, on 9-11, 11, 11 years into the business, my business changed because I took a ninja class. You've probably seen or heard this quote before um, from FM Alexander, but people don't decide their futures. They decide their habits and their habits decide their futures. I want to read you a quote from Atomic Habits, which is the James Clear book that I talked about earlier. I mean, I could, I could have read this to you for the entire 50 minutes, but I love this. Um, your outcomes are a lagging measure of your habits. Your net worth is a lagging measure of your financial habits. Your weight is a lagging measure of your eating habits. Your knowledge is a lagging measure of your learning habits. Time magnifies the margin between success and failure. Time tells all. So with that said, what do these habits look like? The good news is, and you've heard me say this before just in different ways because I wasn't quoting these two gentlemen, but if you don't like where you are, I got great news. Today's a new day, you can change your habits because your habits will decide your future. You get to decide what your habits are. 
So we're just quickly going to go through the habits because of course we don't have um, all day. But the five daily habits, number one, gratitudes and affirmations, how you start your day. Remember um, Dr. Stephen Covey's three circles? So the control, the middle, that's where I come in. Am I controlling my morning routine, my gratitudes and affirmations? Well, Terry, here's the problem. I don't, I don't have time. I, I, I don't have time to change my, my, um, my, my habits and my gratitudes and all that. I mean, my day starts early and I've got so much to do that I just can't possibly make all of this happen. And I'm going to argue with you and say, yeah, you do. You could get up earlier. You could get up earlier and you could show up earlier and, um, and take a little bit of time for yourself. That's where the control comes in. Habit number two is time blocking. Am I blocking everything for every day, including personal time? But am I blocking what I know I need to do in order to get where I want to get in order to serve the people that I'm here to serve? Am I time blocking? I want to stay on my agenda and not the agenda of someone else or my device or a book or the TV or the pool or whatever the case may be. Two handwritten personal notes daily. We've never had more time on our hands, not that we're all using it wisely, than we do now. Two notes, 15 minutes. Well, who do I write a note to? Come on, guys. You write a note to people you care about. You write a note to the neighbor. You write a note to your sphere of influence. You look at Facebook and see who's got something going on. You write a note to somebody who's either got something going on or you could just love on. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I was thinking about you. Just a note of encouragement. Number four, focus on your hot list daily. I'm going to say this because I know all of you know what I mean, but what does your business tracker look like? It would have been interesting if Kristen, uh, Christian had said this morning, um, before you get on the call, Terry wants you all to turn in your business tracker so she can see exactly where you are this year. It would have been curious to see how many business trackers we would have gotten, Christian. What's your hot list? It's your people that are going to buy or sell soon. They're, they're, they're approved. They're getting their house ready for the market or they're on the market. They're hot. Focus on your warm list daily. The people that are not hot, but they're there. They've said, as soon as this is over, I'm moving. Um, as soon as this, as soon as that, whatever. They've, you have an idea that they are maybe going to do something in the near future. I don't know if I told you this, so please forgive me if I did, because I can't remember who I told, but I watched the Inman Connect conference this year. It was only $50, and there were so many amazing speakers on it. But um, Rich Barton, the founder of Zillow, and to me, uh, you know, he's obviously a big deal. He's come in and disrupted our market. He's a multi-bazillionaire. That might be a slight exaggeration, but you get what I mean, right? And so Rich Barton is being interviewed by Brad, Brad Inman. And so they turn on the Zoom call, and Brad is standing doing the interview, and Rich is sitting and Rich is sitting in his bedroom. Now, my internal dialogue, none of my business, they didn't call me and ask me for my opinion, right? I'm like, okay, this is Rich Barton, and he's in his bedroom on a Zoom call. That's weird. I mean, like, seriously, is that the best you could do, Rich? You know, but it's none of my business, so I just listen, and I'm taking in what I'm taking in. And at the end of the call, end of the interview, about 40 minutes in, Brad said, with all due respect, buddy, I got a question for you. You're in your bedroom. That's weird. Why? And I'll never forget this. And I hope you never do either. He goes, oh, interesting. You should ask. He goes, when this whole thing's over, meaning COVID, he goes, one of two things is going to happen. He said, I'll either sell and buy another house or we'll be remodeling this house because my wife is on a Zoom call in our office and I'm on a Zoom call in our bedroom. Now I thought two things again. Uh, number one, his wife must be pretty amazing because she got the office, right? Um, and number two, even the rich Bartons of the world are learning things about themselves that they had no idea would happen that have happened because of our current situation. Are you focusing on your people? Larry Kendall did a panel of agents 
across the nation, not all in the same place, but across the nation. And the interesting thing about these agents is they were all very high producers. Just to give you an example, one of them is a $20 million a year producer. One of them is an $8 million producer. It, it, and maybe that's not a lot to you. To me, that was a very high producers, right? And he asked this question, they're all ninjas. And he said, what's the one thing? Like, what is the secret sauce? Could you tell us what is it that is just creating this consistent um, success in your life, right? And you're, it's gonna blow you away, but you'll believe it because you've been around this a lot, right? And they said, it's really easy. It's the way I start my day. When I, stay, when I start my day right, four people from across the nation who don't necessarily know each other, the way I start my day. When I start my day, the way I want my day to go, and I talk to myself and I sit with myself and I do whatever my morning routine looks like, my day turns into a great day. But you know what's crazy about a great day? Is one great day after another turns into a great week. And then great weeks, which turns into great months, which of course could turn in to my best year in the business so far. I only say this because I'm encouraged when I hear something like this. So many of my ninjas, I'll only speak to my people that call me, that I get to share with, um, are having their best year they've ever had during COVID. Why? Because they're showing up. They're showing up. People are experiencing pain or pleasure. They need a trusted advisor and they haven't put their head in the sand to wait till it's over. They're showing up and they're loving on their people. All right, you thought I forgot the last four. Let's talk about the four weekly habits that I'm going to schedule and have blocked on my calendar. Number six, my client service calls. All the people under contract, people that have just closed, all my listings. Um, you know, just, these, these are just the people that should be hearing from us weekly, should be blocked on my calendar. Two live real estate reviews weekly. Wait a minute, Terry, that says live, right? Well, live's not possible in our market right now. Yes, it is. We're doing it together, you and I, right now. Live is possible. Get on a Zoom call, get on a FaceTime call. Well, here's the problem, Terry. I'm not comfortable with video. I'm not, I, I just don't do really good with video. Neither did I in March. If you don't pivot, if you don't adapt, you will not, you'll become extinct. Do your real estate reviews. In fact, I said this, I think to you on another call, but just in case I didn't, this year I would do a real estate review that looked at last year, January to June versus this year, January to June with COVID and show them the comparison. Otherwise they'll go online and get the information that they think is accurate. Two real estate reviews, 50 live interviews, talk to 50 people a week on the phone, on Zoom, face-to-face, -face, wherever, however, people desperately need social connection right now. They're telling us to socially distance. I'm saying let's physically distance, but let's socially draw near to one another. And then lastly, everything that you learn about these people, update your database, get it on your database. What did I learn? What could I follow up on? Who's okay, who's not, who's hot, who's warm, who's just going along and they're great. But keep notes in your database so that you know next time you call what you talked about last time, number one. And number two, if it's a follow-up call, they go, how did she remember that our son went to basic training and that he was graduating next week and she called the day? She's amazing. Here's the truth. She's not that amazing. She knows what tools she needs to be that amazing. It's so easy to do, but we all know anything easy to do is also easy what? Not to do. Yep, not to do. So folks, I just, I don't want, I don't know about you, but from the heart, and I have good days and bad days, still. You would think we'd gotten used to this. It seems like they're worse, right? Good days, bad days. But I don't wanna survive this. I want to thrive during this time. I want to learn more about me. I want to get wiser. I want to read more. I want to love more. I want to love on people more. I want to be a better person when this is over.
We've always jokingly, jokingly shared the realtor's prayer, but I wonder if you agree with me that this has been a wake-up call. Um, it's been a wake-up call in many people's lives for many different reasons. But if you don't remember the realtor's prayer, let me show it to you. Dear Lord, please give me one more real estate boom. I promise not to blow it this time. We're kind of in a boom, but we're kind of in a down market. But I think about this and I think, how many times did I say this to myself? How many booms have I been in? How many down markets have I been in? I need to get it together. I need to show up and I need to, to, to operate the way that I know I need to, to thrive during this market. To survive and thrive during this market, it's not that hard, but you've got to put your mind to it. Am I going to learn to dance in the rain? I know it's not fun. I know it's scary. I know it's super weird that everywhere we go, we've, we've masked ourselves. So you don't know if I'm smiling or if I'm saying I hate you behind this thing. You don't know, but I'm dancing in the rain. I'm winking. I'm, I'm squinting my eyes. I just want to be with people. And if I have to, then I'll buy those silly masks and I'll wear them and I'll do everything I'm told to do because I want to get better. I want to remember that the Ninja Nine is the key to my success. It's the trend bender. If I'm writing notes, if I'm talking people to people, if I'm being their trusted advisor, am I being the best version of me in this version of the world? Am I being a fountain, not a drain? Virtual viewing. If you're not getting prof professional videos and drone photography and so on, it's a game changer. Quit trying to save your money to success, save your way to success. It, this is an expensive business, but it's also very lucrative. So let's make sure we bring our A game to the, to the party. We package, we price, we promote. We become that person that everyone in town, both realtors and clients alike, know that no matter what's going on, it's how you run your business because it's always been the way you run your business. And lastly, we're going to negotiate like a ninja. We're going to make sure that we, that we share with our folks what negotiation looks like before we get them in negotiation so they understand. I went to the Bell Leadership Institute in um, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, a year ago, February. And I took a class. And in this class, Dr. Gerald Bell, the founder, shared this um, graph with us. And it's called the Mastery Ladder. Many of you have seen it. Uh, I wanted to go and learn for myself about me as a leader. And again, because the, the material doesn't change, he says there's two axes. One is knowledge, and one, of course, is skill and action. And it takes us about 10,000 hours of, of um, doing something to master it. But I'm going to ask you a question. I've asked this particular group several times. Which are we better at? Knowledge? or skill in action? And if you answered the way most of us do, it's knowledge. We know what to do, we just don't always what? Do it, right? The key to converting the, the, the knowledge to skill in action is practice. Are you practicing? You know, I, 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 I'm not even kidding. So many people have said, well, Terry, but you're good at this video thing. Well, my first response is thank you. But my second one is, my first day was in March. I, I didn't do this before. But if I didn't evolve, I would become extinct. Differentiate or Die, a book that we share with you in the installation. I had to learn how to do it. Learn how to do it. You can do it too. But for most realtors, they don't practice what they learn. They're always looking for something new. Don't look for something new if you're not already doing what you know works. I'm sorry. Don't look for something new if you're... You already learned something, but you're not doing it, and you know it works. Do what you learn and see how it works. You don't need something new. You need to do what you know will work. Our industry is known for practicing while the game is on the line. I'm not going to practice with my, my colleagues. I'll just practice on this $800,000 listing. Who does that? We do. Our industry does. Those top selling ninjas in the country have one thing in common. It's going to blow your mind. They said this, I just do the basics better than anyone. Get back to the basics, friends. Just get back to the basics. 
Do what you know you need to do. Start with yourself mindset, refine your skill set, practice, and your actions will put opportunity for all of that to turn into a life that you can't even dream of. TSW, if you'll put it to work, the system works. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me this morning. Thanks for having me, David and uh, Christian. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can actually see my friends. If I can figure out how to do that, give me a second. There we are. Terry, awesome. that was incredible. Thank you so much. Good, good. I'm so glad you got something out of it. I'm glad you're here. It's good to see you. Hi, Bill. It's good to see all of you. Oh, I should stop saying hi to everybody. Hi, Jordan. <laughs> hi, Daly. <laughs> I miss you guys so much. I'm going to scroll through the pages. So any questions, anything at all that I could help enlighten you or we could talk through together um, that, would, that would help benefit where we are today, just throw it out there. I'm, I'm, here. I'm here for you. Anything at all? You see anything, Christian? I don't. I'm watching chat and I don't see. Oh, there was one question a while back. Yes. Um, that email that you had shared from Lawrence Yoon. Do you know when yes. that was sent? A date? Approximate date? How long ago? I do. Do me a favor, Christian. Would you mm -hmm. email me? Yeah. And I actually have a copy of the email, but I didn't have the date on that slide. I want to say it was the early part of April, but um, I have the actual email. So if you'll email me, I'll get it. Thank you. Wonderful. I, I will do that. Okay. Anybody else? Don't forget if you haven't read Atomic Habits, you guys, this book is off the hook. Amazing. Great, great book. You'll love it. Terry, thanks so much for being on today. You are awesome. Well, so are you, David. And thanks for having me. Thanks for sharing your morning with me. I love you all. I can't wait to you. see you face to face. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Terry. All right. Take care. Bye.